These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. Art is a language. It is a way to communicate. Art is not an act of putting pen to paper. It is so much more than that. It is sharing a story. It is communicating their thoughts. It is this unfiltered expression. It's a language um, that needs to be supported. It needs to be celebrated. And most importantly, it needs to be protected. Every day, the National Access Art Center turns on its lights to offer protective, creative space to artists living with disabilities. What does art mean to you? Relaxation. For me, it just means the world. Just space to be myself. Who I am. You know, so the art fills me with a lot of happiness. Oh, it's euphoric. It's an integral part of my life. It's just wonderful. <laughs> it's you could tell stories more than one, more than one way. My mind is just full of imaginations and dreams. Drawing something that you design so that you let people look at it and people will be learning their stories. That's what it means to me. Founded as the Indefinite Art Society, the organization had already served Calgary artists for over 40 years when it became the National Access Arts Centre in 2020. Now its advocacy for disabled artists continues under its current president and CEO. Where you guys are at, especially in the disability sort of space. My name is J.S. Ryu. I'm the president and CEO of the National Access Arts Centre and we are in the National Access Arts Centre Visual Arts Studio facility here in Calgary. The National Access Arts Centre is Canada's largest and oldest disability arts organization. We were founded in 1975 and now we support more than 350 artists with physical and or developmental disabilities through a whole range of programs in the visual arts, digital media, music, theatre and dance. The main goal of the National Access Arts Centre is to put a spotlight on a community that never really had received that spotlight before, especially in our arts and culture ecosystem. Um, oftentimes, those marginalized voices often remain on the margins. They're seen as the fringe. And the work of the NAAC is to really push those individuals and push our community out into the forefront, into the mainstream, and be recognized and celebrated for their creativity. When we think about it, when one in five Canadians identifies having a disability, our belief is that one in five art exhibitions, shows and presentations should also uh, focus on and celebrate uh, artists living with disabilities as well. And so we work hard to make that happen. My name is David Opong and I come from Ghana. I love music and I want to learn how to DJ and I want people to come together and Please have some music with some entertainment and I want to learn how to use the instrument, then I'll be able to do it by myself. Feeling the beat, David grooves along with a digital music workshop. My name is Alicia. I've done art on my own since I was young. I used to do a lot of drawing since I was young. I used to have giant handfuls of paper in my room. And I've been learning about different types of singing and different types of story making. And I was given a gift to talk to myself along with spitting without getting dizzy. They both helped me give me ideas for my stories. I have this thing where whenever I think about a character, sometimes I feel their emotions. When the character is happy, I'm happy. When they're sad, I'm sad. I sometimes get the same thing with people on the TV. <laughs> to take their work further, artists find inspiration and learn new techniques in workshops like storytelling through opera. ...characters that are more than just what we expect, stereotypes, archetypes. There's so much more. This package is a curious cat. 
A curious cat. So are you saying there's a cat inside the box? Yes. And it's a musical cat. Ooh, I'm so excited where this story is going. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, I'm going to wrap up the story. Luckily, I had packed my Mary Poppins bag because every time I go to the mall, I know you need band-aids, I know you need water, and sometimes I like to bring my tutu. So I pulled out my tutu and I put it on and walked into the pet store because as an opera singer, I am looking for a musical cat in my life. And that is the story of how I adopted my first pet. <laughs> Good job, everyone! Each workshop is part of the center's larger goal of supporting their artists. It's a goal that's enthusiastically met every day by staff like Carly Mortimer. Hello, Carly speaking. Good, thanks, how are you? My name is Carly Mortimer. I'm the Director of Artists and Program Development. At the National Access Art Centre, I have the privilege of stewarding the artistic practices of about 350 artists in Calgary. Oh, Carly and an artist discuss the Centre's upcoming dance party. It won't go too late. I'm going to party away. <laughs> Well, that's what we do. We gotta celebrate, right? <laughs> it's an incredible responsibility and something that's so full of joy is to be able to find the ingredients and platforms and challenges to develop such an incredible group of artists. We offer all kinds of programming from string quartet composition to visual arts to um, being able to DJ. We really follow what the art artists are wanting. Every year we sit down with our artists and we ask them what their artistic goals are and that really informs the programming and our offerings. So sometimes this can be kite making or how do we turn our art into merchandise. This can be in how do I develop myself as a professional artist. So our programs really run the gamut of what kind of things it takes to provide artists with proper support. Does the National Access Arts Centre help you accomplish those goals? Lobsters, yes. <laughs> yes, the programs have helped me increase my creativity and, and with my stories too. I love to sing, but I've always wanted to make my own music. That way I could create my own songs. At weekly visits to Decidedly Jazz Dance Works, artists get a chance to do more than just listen to music. Forward, yep, cross and back. Four bushes, five, six, seven, eight, drop them. Three, four, and squish. Squish, squish. With an instructor's help, artists move through the dance studio, exploring their own creativity. And like a tree, whatever that feels like in your body. Good, and hold it for a second. Okay, and on three, change one thing about this shape. Ready, one, two, three, change one thing. I think I changed two, but that's okay. Happy dancing! Woo. My dream has always been, from the day that I worked at the CNIB, has always been around a world where people with disabilities are not mocked, they are not uh, discriminated against, they are not harassed, they are not treated like lesser citizens. Um, and let's face it, uh, that is the reality. Like if, if anybody who tells you differently is, is in incredible denial. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Kathy Austin has been a member of the National Access Arts Center since 2009. I, I had some issues with drawing for years because I took a drawing class in college and after the class I went up and said, I couldn't see what the assignment was, you know, can you let me look at the books up close? And he's just like, oh my God, like what is a blind person doing in a drawing class? So I felt like I didn't draw for a long time. Uh, and then a friend said, you know, you can get it back. So I spent 18 months like doing a sketch every day. And yeah, I got it back. We have to work extra hard to be able to prove our community's worth, um, which I think is a very sad reality, but one that we take, you know, very bluntly. And we are very pragmatic about it when we know that we have to knock that much harder, where we have to be that much more persistent to convince our partners, 
when we have to convince our communities to think of our community in particular as artists and that their creativity should be supported and, and showcased in legitimate, credible ways, um, that conversation has to happen far more often than when we're talking about a community without a disability. In 2006, um, my husband was unemployed and I wanted to try to help with the money situation by selling some art. There's probably no way I can make enough money to live on um, as a blind person. It's just not going to happen. Among blind people, there's 90% unemployment. And I had tried, uh, over the years, I've tried to get real jobs. <laughs> but people take one look at me with the cane and just go, oh, pff, she can't do anything. But it's different when people see you right. Hopefully. Yeah. A big challenge that we find when we're designing programs is what non-disabled people tell us that our artists can't do. So we've been told kind of our artists can't travel, they can't be challenged. If it's not safe for everybody, it's not, nobody should be able to take this up. Um, that they can't, you know, do something new, that they can't work fast, and that they can't do anything outside of a coloring book. That's what we've heard um, from people who call themselves advocates of disability. And so that's a big thing is to challenge those ideas. And those ideas can oftentimes be rooted in the artist. So having them rethink themselves is what they're capable of as artists being really, really important. My name is Andrine Trombley. I go by Angie. I had surgery done and when it all happened, I was quite depressed and trying to find things for me to do and they suggested the art. The art has helped me to focus on life and not what happened. Because she loves making and painting pottery, Angie is creating a heart-shaped bowl for her daughter. Making art for family and friends is a large motivator for her. The biggest way that we can support artists living with disabilities across Canada is to showcase artists living with disabilities in all corners of this country. And so whenever we bring an artist from uh, around the world to showcase their works in Canada, or whenever, whenever we're showcasing our own artists from our own community, um, we make it uh, very intentional to be able to reach into different communities across Canada through exhibitions and presentation opportunities. What we see now more than ever before is that our artists thrive when they are connected with world-class opportunities to create and showcase their work. We are connecting them to training opportunities and residency opportunities locally and around the world, opportunities that would be given to any other artist should they not have a disability. We do that because we believe our community deserves nothing less. Now, there's a lot of other opportunities that the staff at the NAC are giving me, such as um, residencies that come with money, which is really important, because as an as a artist with a disability, it's very hard to get paid for my work. They also had a program here called QUAC, the um, Queer Accessible Arts Cabaret, and I did a live performance in that. Oh, I've wanted to do stand-up comedy, and I had an opportunity to do it in that QUAC Cabaret, but I chickened out. I've done a movie poster for the movie poster display, I've also done a modern icon for the modern icon exhibit. For me, the opportunities that I had is I drew some players like Messi, Ronaldo, and the rest. After that, I used to be drawing the Trump and Joe Biden. So they went to put it in the strike gallery. Everybody came to look at it and it was fun. Through public events, the National Access Arts Center is able to bring artists and audiences together through art they love. We surround ourselves in arts and culture all the time. And that sensitivity is now there where audiences are beginning to ask, why aren't there more actors or artists representing a certain race? Why aren't there actors representing a certain community? And I think the biggest way that people can help the NAAC and indeed the entire disability community, the artist community of folks living with disabilities across Canada is for audience members and 
uh, culture consumers to start thinking about and asking that question around, why aren't we seeing more individuals with disabilities, developmental or physical, being represented on my screen, on that wall at the gallery, on that stage at my local theater? And that's what will help change and what will add fuel to this fire that we're trying to set on the arts and culture world. I think that's the most important thing that we'd love our broader community to think about. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. At the Pioneer venue on May 17th, the National Access Arts Centre announced a unique partnership with the family of the late Wan Lee. Already a renowned sculptor with exhibitions around the world, the Centre's partnership is a way of expanding Lee's presence in Canada while being able to showcase the country's amazing disabled artists. Since the launch of our new brand and direction as the National Access Arts Centre in 2020, we've worked tremendously hard to live up to our expectations to become the country's leading disability arts organization. With today's announcement, we're able to amplify this commitment to be nationwide, all thanks to a new partnership that we have forged with the family and estate of the late artist Wan Lee. Today, the National Access Arts Centre is pleased to announce the creation of the NAAC Wan Lee Endowment Fund. And lastly, the NAAC is very excited to announce that it will soon be expanding its physical presence beyond Calgary and entering the Toronto market. We've had artists work celebrated in 10 plus cities all around the world. We were one of a very select view of few Canadian cultural organizations to be presented at the United Nations Climate Change Conference just a few months ago in Glasgow. We became the first disability arts organization to partner with our country's foreign affairs ministry to be a part of its cultural diplomacy strategy. One of our artists' works was displayed at the Canada House Pavilion at Dubai Expo 2020. These are things where we haven't done anything different for artists. We've, we've always been able to create those platforms for artists to be able to express themselves. But now where we're, we're building those those bridges and most importantly we're able to share with our artists what is actually possible and that realm of possibility is beyond their wildest imagination to be able to see our artists understand that and and strive to be better because they know that better is possible um, is absolutely the most rewarding part of my career the center's artists get their fair share of accolades as Carly informs an artist they've been published a composer <laughs> woo, woo. Pretty good, hey? So if you open up, I think you are, oh look it, it opened up right to your composition. Our artists have been challenging us in what events mean and what it means to be welcome. We've had dance parties, karaoke parties, um, we've done wine tasting, all kinds of things to really help bring more people into the fold and into caring about our artists and our centre. C-Space King Edward has been home to several of the NAAC's recent events. They've included performances and film screenings. In May, after months of pandemic isolation, the artists of the National Access Arts Centre reunited in front of an audience at the C-Space for an improvised performance piece. Created with an eclectic mix of performing and visual arts, its collection of solo, duo, and group work was a way to capture the essence of each performer. Sharing work is at the heart of how the National Access Arts Centre supports its artists. It's exciting, even transformative. It's art. Yes, art has given me confidence to trust in myself, trust in others also. All the staff are amazing, kind, caring, and it just makes the whole thing like family. The support of the NAC is just so much better. 
And this big change in my life has been truly amazing. All I know is that I have so many goals that I wish to accomplish someday. And I want to thank my family members for supporting me and all the stars in everything about my artwork. More than 25 staff members work tirelessly to create a space that leaves artists free to express themselves and their unique perspectives. The work that is ahead of us as an organization, the work that is ahead of us as an advocate, as a voice, as a supporter of our community of artists is, is immense because we still have so much more to do to crack open this incredibly traditional, a backwards, somewhat racist, a very much ableist system that continues to perpetuate what is or what is an art. And I, you know, we always say the arts better get ready because we're we're coming in with our community and we're not stopping until we see our community have their equitable spot being recognized in our sector across the country. Producers Aidan Campbell, Andy Kermack. Director Aidan Campbell. Writers Andy Kermack, Jeff Kubik, Linnea Bryce. Interviewers Aidan Campbell, Andy Kermack. Director of Photography John Bellow. Camera operators John Bellow, Cameron Eng, Parker Merritt. Production manager Andy Kermack. Location audio Frank Russo, Ron Oshui. Editors John Bellow, Nicholas Bolrice, Cameron Eng. Sound mix Nicholas Bolrice. Special thanks J.S. Ryu, Carly Mortimer, Nicole Kaskowski, Kylie Pop, Kathy Austin, David Opong, Andreen Tremblay, Alicia Morrison. The staff and artists at the National Access Arts Center, narrator Jim Van Horn, integrated described video specialist Simone Cupid, graphics Andrew Antonello, content development specialist Jim Crisco, coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Karen I. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. A 2C Media Production. Copyright 2022 Accessible Media, Inc.